Hi and hello. Let me show you how easy it is to install the preview version of my project Hydra or Hydra. So go to my GitHub page and select the Deploy to Azure button. That directly brings you into a deployment where you have to select the subscription. In the best case, you create a new resource group like and select a region. For me, I go for West Europe and I give the deployment a name. The name is later the host name of the website for the project Hydra, like my Hydra. And if you click on tab, the system will check if the name is available. So that looks good. Then click on next. So to log in to the web page, to the web portal later of Project Hydra, we need a service principle. We can easily create the, create the service principle by copying the PowerShell script and run it in an Azure Cloud Shell. You can start the Cloud Shell with this icon. Give it a second. If you do it first, you have to select a storage account to store the profile on and make sure that you are in the PowerShell module and not in the bash part. So let us wait. So it's ready. I paste the PowerShell script with a right click into this window and then I hit enter. So the service principle is created. We need the application ID. I mark it, right click, copy, and then I post it into this application ID field. And I do the same for the secret. And I paste it in twice. So that looks good. Click on next. And the third part, we have to define the administrator of the solution. Here is the user principle name expected, like my name. This is an account in my Azure Active Directory. And then I click on next. And I skip the part with the text. So finally, let us hit on create to create the deployment to the, deploy the resources into the Azure subscription. This will take a while, maybe a few minutes or so. So the deployment is ready. Let me close the cloud shell and let us go directly to the resources. From there, I go to the app service and in the app service, we can see the URL of the Hydra portal. So let me click on that. And it directly opened the portal. Give it a few seconds. The first start needs some time. Then I log in with the account I have entered in the, the deployment. And I accept with the consent that the application is allowed to log me in. And we here we go. Accept the end user license agreement and the terms. And then let us start to add the first tenant. I go to tenants and I click on add. For that, we need a service principle another service principle who has access to the Azure resources itself, containing the WBD deployment and the virtual machines. For that, I go back to the Azure portal. I go to Azure Active Directory, select App Registration and New Registration. I give it a common name, for example, as we see, Hydra resource access or any other name and click on register. After that, I go to certificate and secrets 
and I generate a new client secret. I do that for 18 months. In my case, I hit on add, and then I copy the value, the secret, to Notepad, for example. So I use I need this later, and if I leave the site, I will not see the value again. So let us go to overview. We need two other parameters. We need the application ID. I copy it to Notepad as well, and the tenant ID. You can have multiple WD or better Azure Active Directory tenants inside of Hydra. So now we have all data for our service principle. Let us give the service principle access to my resources. I will do this on a subscription level, and you can do this even on a resource group level as well to give it only access to the resources which are relevant to WBD. So let me add it to this subscription. I go to access and control and I add a new role assignment. I need contributor permissions to allow the system later to work with the resources and I add the name as we see Hydra. Oh, let me figure out the right one. Hydra resource access. So that is the one I need. I click on save. Save. That makes sure that the service principal has access to my resources. Important is having access contributor permissions to the host pools and the workspaces, so the WD resources, and to the virtual machine, and um, important, to the virtual network to later attach new created virtual machine to the VNet. So after that, I go back to Project Hydra, and I enable the new tenant. I give it a name, my, or oh, let me call it IT Pro, IT Pro Cloud.de. And then I copy in the tenant ID, the application ID, that is what I have stored in Notepad, and the secret. So that is fine. I can test the access to make sure that I um, don't make made a mistake, but I copy it. I think that should be fine. Testing. And then if it works, I will see, yeah, that looks good. And then I can save the configuration. And I can add more tenants to see more WD or Azure Active Directories with WD environments inside my portal. So it's saved. Let me go back to the dashboard. And then it will take maybe a minute or so to collect all the data first, and then we will see the data. So, oh, that was fast. Okay, now I can see all my host pools I have in my subscription, host pools I'm having in my subscription and can access this resource groups. For example, the importance point is this little icon. If you click on that, you can see the host pools, uh, the host pool with a session host. And right now I have no user logged in and no host pool is on. But from here you can start starting um, session host, logging of users or so. Additionally, you have the user session tab where you can see all the users over all tenants, over all host pools you have in and work with the user like uh, disconnecting, stopping, sending messages and so on. If you go back to the overview, then we can modify the configuration for the host pools, for example, to enable auto scaling. So, Autoscaling is a built in and you can easily enable it and you can go and let me describe this later and make another video to make it more to show it more in detail. You can also work with use power on connect to have an autoscaling, upscaling and downscaling host pool in your deployment to, um, to start the host and later deallocate the host. You can also create session host on demand if you have not enough session host or if you want to have a schedule 
which maybe creates you in the morning between 6 a.m. and 8 a.m. maybe five new session hosts. And build first means that the session hosts are not started. The session hosts are created based on an image. The image can be, or the rollout can be defined in the new session host rollout. Don't forget to click on save on each page if you made um, some changes. For example, new sessions rollout, you can give it a name like WD production and some hashtags for counting up the numbers and define the subnets like my WBD subnet in rest Europe. And that is comparable to that what you what you do if you are using WD admin. So that's the same way of deployment. I can select an image or maybe the newest image from an image gallery and for sure which machine size so that are the normal steps. And if you're fine with that, you can save it. And that is what then is needed by the auto scaling mechanism to start or create, in this case, new session host. So let me show the rest in another, in another video. Feel free to test the, the deployment, the project Hydra, and I'm very happy about feedback to, to improve it and um, make the next change to, to make it to build it to a complete solution. Thanks a lot.